Today's episode of the Vegan Life Podcast is brought to you by Vivo Life. Vivo Life are a health and supplements brand to have a brilliant collection of products. From the everyday essentials like B12, D3 and Omega-3, which, let's face it, they're must-haves if you're following a plant-based diet. Greens and multi-nutrient powders, everyday vegan protein powders, mushroom lattes and much, much more. Vivo Life make my favorite health supplements. And I love that they're an environmentally conscious company. Not only are they certified carbon neutral, but they also plant a tree for each order. And their health supplements taste and make me feel amazing. And there's not many things I can say that about. If you're looking to fill the gaps in your vegan diet, look no further than Vivo Life's natural, healthy, sustainable supplements. Welcome to the Vegan Life Podcast. The podcast is all about great vegan food and how to eat it. And today, well, we're getting all modern. You know, that sort of cuisine that you look at and think, how did you do that? That stuff. That's what we're going to do. Let's meet two amazing chefs. Irina Linovich, having previously worked for Vogue Ukraine as the international producer, has put her style background into creating the stylish and urban restaurant Holy Carrot. The menu is globally inspired and is very much led by the best seasonal organic British produce. And Andrew Darg, along with his partner Donna Conroy, opened Vanilla Black in York in 2004. Vanilla Black was known for breaking away from the vegetarian norms, and they use modern techniques to push the boundaries of vegetarian and vegan cuisine. Vanilla Black was Michelin recommended and held two AA rosettes. The new venture is a touring cookery school as well as online training. Welcome to you both. Hello to you. Hello. Hello, Irina. Uh, And well done. It it took a while for us to get there, but we're here now. Um, There's quite a few questions to get through. I'm really, really excited to find out about uh you know your 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 po- frankly posh posh cuisine um i got a first question though i just wanted to ask you both what is the best vegan food that you've eaten recently um because uh you know i'm curious i tell you while you're thinking i'll tell you that i tried uh some uh cheese kind of like a camembert brie thing made by nourish uh n u r i s h h uh in france and I was pretty blown away by that. Whoa. I mean, it was very hard to tell the difference between that and actual camembert. It was so good. I actually cleaned out Carrefour in Caen. I bought <laughs> every single one of them they had. I think it was eight or nine of them. And I'm not Whoa. sorry. Uh, Andrew, what about you? You know, recently, um, we're down in Dorset at the moment, and we went to a tiny little cafe. It wasn't a vegan cafe. Um, but I ordered, they called it um, seared tofu with, um, it was on um, some sourdough with an Asian slaw. Mm. Uh, so they made a coleslaw and they'd put some chilli in there and they'd put um, some coriander in there. I think it was a bit of lemon, a lemon or lime in there. But the small point that I really got was they sliced the tofu really thinly and cooked it. And I, being honest, I looked at it and I thought, that's overcooked. And you've had it sitting around for too long. However, it went kind of quite chewy. And I thought, that's really nice. (laughs) Yeah. Love that. So the texture was not what I expected. It was better than I expected. (laughs) That's good. It's good you didn't send it back. Uh, Irina, what about you? What's the best vegan food you've eaten recently? So um, uh, recently I tested uh, our new afternoon tea. And uh, I was missing recently, you know, this fishy seaweed um taste and i wanted some maybe because it's uh, autumn coming so uh, we decided to create uh, an open uh, crab sandwich but we use heart of palm uh, oh. for this you know crab texture and our homemade maya with a little bit of um, forage seaweed uk forage seaweed and it was this you know amazing fish taste that i was missing uh, maybe my yodin level needed, uh, and I really love 
uh, this texture uh, and you know the bread was really crunchy so it has you know this kind of a little bit chewy uh, heart of palm uh, mixed with hint of lemon and uh, this really really crunchy bread so i really really love it um wow i think that's my favorite for for the autumn <laughs> yes yeah. that Texture. sounds sounds so good yeah. um Okay, uh, people have been emailing their questions. It's podcast at veganlifemag.com. If you've got a question about any kind of plant-based cookery, um, we're here to help. Uh, Sam says, uh, how can you achieve the smoke that comes out of the glass bowl? And does it really give extra flavor to the food or is it just for drama? Um, so this is, is this like a dry ice thing? Is that what uh, Sam's talking about? Where it I, I've can... seen this. Um, we used to use one of these, but it's a cloche, basically, like a, a glass cloche. Uh -huh. And um, what, what you do is, you, you, it's called a smoke gun. And what you do is, you, it's a gun, it looks like a gun, mm -hmm. uh, and it has a rubber tube on the end and you load it with oak pellets. With what pellets? And, Orc. Orc, as in the fictitious... Orc the wood. Sorry, that's my northern accent, isn't it? Orc the wood. <laughs> <laughs> I literally... Listen, my kid is really into Dungeons and Dragons at the moment. And so I had orcs. it as ORC. I was like, where on earth do you get an orc pellet? Is it like an owl pellet? Is it just minced dwarf? How is that vegan? <laughs> now I'm on it a bit of wood. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and you light it, and what happens is there's a small vacuum inside, and it, it transfers the smoke through the tube and you trap it under the cloche. Oh, right. To be honest, it's 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 really for effect. It doesn't give the, the food a smoky flavour as such because it would need to sit on there for quite a while. But in a restaurant, what they'll do is they would load it with smoke, put the cloche on and s send it out. Yeah. Um, you could, I suppose, sit some food under it, but it would need a long time to smoke to get the flavour. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Irina, have done you it. done some we've smoking done, Yeah, we have a smoking gun. We use it now <laughs> to make... Um, this carrot carrot uh, loch uh, sandwich, and uh, uh, once we made an experiment, we use all this um, uh, that Andrew was talking, and uh, it's uh, it's it's definitely a more drama thing unless you do a very important step. Uh, it's time consuming a little bit. You need uh, to take a bowl, cover it really good uh, with something that a smoke doesn't go out. Uh, and leave it for around 20-30 minutes. Uh, so, um, for example, your cheese or like uh, carrot that you want to be smoked uh, worth your bagel um, need to uh, stay for about 20-30 minutes. And then uh, you put it in a cloche uh, and, you know, make a drama around it. But then you have some taste uh, yeah. because the smoke already penetrates the products. Right. So that's, that. that's, that, that's an important step, not just to have a drama around, but a really nice taste. Yeah. If it's a full, I've seen chefs do it and it's a full meal and it's, it's like you say, it's for drama, but you need, as, as Rin says, you need longer for it. I've also found that if you brush something with oil, uh, say a piece of carrot or a piece of cooked <laughs> aubergine and leave the smoke on it, for some reason, the smoke seems to attach itself easier to, to the oil. Oh, okay. So there's a little bit of oil on there and it'll hold it better. So it'll work with a fry up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go, Sam. Hope that helps. Leslie says, I saw on an old MasterChef episode. Oh, well, don't get me started on MasterChef. Whoa. That a Michelin chef served one tomato as a starter, but it was infused with so many different flavours. How can I achieve this at home? Well, I don't know if you saw that episode, but how do you infuse flavour into a tomato? Irina, should we start with you, Ashley? Um, let's let do. Let's, for example, I have an idea to do something. You can use tomato, or you can use, for example, a ringi mushroom, uh, and maybe uh, you can use it in different, you know, textures and tastes. Uh, for example, you can go around the world, uh, take uh, a tomato, make it like a tartar with a spicy maya and a little bit sesame oil, so it can be like a tartar. Then you use another part of tomato. Uh, and make um, something like Nikkei uh, ceviche. Uh, mm. Cut it a little bit bigger pieces, uh, add yuzu, soy, coriander, jalapeno, uh, mix, and then you have a Nikkei ceviche. Or you can make it simply like uh, if you have a big, big tomato, uh, like uh, uh, you can 
cut the third part into Italian carpaccio and truffle oil uh, and a little bit salt, pepper, and you have nice uh, uh, summer truffle carpaccio. So uh, if the season of tomatoes is really good, uh, you're lucky to have uh, three different countries just in one tomato. How you like nice. the idea? <laughs> nice. And nice idea. I like the idea of ceviche without kind of going, oh, I'm eating raw fish. Um, Andrew. What would you infuse? You know what? Yeah. I'm going to go off a little bit here because I once saw, and we did this many, many years ago, uh, there was a chef in France. And I have this, oh, a battle in my head that, <laughs> it, that we, we uh, maybe it's in this country, maybe it's abroad, I don't know, but we, we categorise certain products. For example, a tomato is never a dessert. But if you think about it, a tomato is a fruit. Right. And I once saw a chef and we copied the idea. And what he'd done is he'd done a stuffed tomato as a dessert. What? And I thought that was really clever because if you think about it, if you think of a, a green apple, a crisp, green, firm apple, yeah. the taste of it is quite acidic. Mm. However, we're quite happy to put that on a dessert with lots of sugar. Mm. But if you think of a... a, a a, uh, a tomato at the height of summer, it's quite sweet, probably sweeter than the apple. <laughs> so surely the apple has more place, uh, sorry, the tomato has more place on the dessert than the apple. And that's how I got my head around it. And we, we added, um, we took some rice, um, uh, cooked some rice and there was flaked almonds in there, some caster sugar, uh, some marzipan, some dried fruits and some soft spices such as nutmeg and cinnamon. Oh, wow. And we popped them inside of the tomato and then baked it until it was just soft and served it. We served it with a syrup, and I can't remember what the syrup was now. But basically, we took the idea of a stuffed tomato. Amazing. With lots of flavours and onto a dessert. That nice. sounds so good. Yeah. Uh, and you can add some unusual ice cream, for example, purple carrot ice cream made in Papa yeah. Jet. So wow. amazing. Yeah. The garden dessert. Uh, yeah, plants, you can do from plants anything. That's why yeah. I love the vegan food, because you, it's just your fantasy uh, that make limits. And so I really love this idea to make dessert from tomato. Great. Definitely yeah. will do it on a weekend. <laughs> I agree. And I've had discussions because I mix a lot in the chef world and I have a discussions with them. Um, some would call them heated discussions. Um, <laughs> and I once... I had a conversation with a chef who was a, a meat chef and I said, the difference is, and I, I've said this a million times, for me, uh, I'll have to mention meat, is my mother is a terrible cook, but if someone gave her a piece of steak and told her to put it under the grill for four minutes and then turn it over for another four minutes and serve it with some chips, she could do that easy. Yes. I see that as too easy. Mm. Where if I give my mother a cabbage and a potato and a carrot and said, do something interesting with that, she would struggle. So I, the way I look at it is, when you have less ingredients, so you don't have fish, chicken, etc., you have to then start using your imagination and you have to then rely on your skills even more so. That's, a, that's an excellent point. Um, I mean, I always kind of... <sighs> few vegans could deny that the smell of searing flesh can be really delicious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's not about that for 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 most vegans. I mean, some vegans, I'm sure, but uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, that's the challenge. Uh, yeah, you have to start to you. You have to actually. And there's some chefs out there in the meat world that are uh, applauded for their use of the the cheaper cuts of meat, mm -hmm. uh, and they're applauded because they're using their skills to create something good yeah. from v something very basic. But I still don't think in the vegan or the vegetarian world that us as chefs are applauded as much for getting something amazing from a carrot and a red pepper. Yeah, it's a good point. Well, um, Leslie, um, I hope that's given you some tomato inspiration. Um, I don't, I don't, I mean, yes, different, different attacks for your tomato. Sweet um, and sour. <laughs> Sweet and sour, exactly. Uh, Catherine says, how can I do a tweel crisp? Um, Andrew, first of all, just describe a tweel crisp 
for people who haven't been to the highfalutin a restaurant? Twill. Right, OK. Um, it, it, French is... Well, there we go. In French, twill just means tile. Uh, right. And, a, and a, originally, it was used um, in desserts, and it was basically a very basic batter that was spread very thinly and cooked in the oven. Um, and it was almost like a wafer. Over the years, people have adapted that. We, we used to do it in a restaurant with something called isomalt. Isomalt okay. is, a, is a form of sugar that's not sweet. Yeah. Um, and we would mix, say, for example, tomato powder or beetroot just with that. And then we would dehydrate it and it would come out as a, as a crisp. Oh, wow. I'm not expecting people to do that because it's quite tricky. But basically, you can, you can look online for a, a vegan twill. Um, the difference is with the vegan twill is they're using a vegan spread or a vegan margarine and um, chickpea water. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, and, some, and, and there's some flour in there, etc. It's very basic. It's a basic batter, basically. But the secret is when you spread it on some um, uh, baking parchment or greaseproof paper, you have to keep it really thin because you need, technically you, you're drying it out. That's how it becomes crisp. Right. So you have to keep it really thin and bake it on a low heat. Basically, you're evaporating the water. Gotcha. And is this one of those things that you, um, you know, you've got like 15 seconds to mould once you take yeah. it out of the oven? <laughs> you've made one of these. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> no, but I've watched a lot of yeah. Yeah. The, the good thing is if you've, if you can, yeah, you take them out and you would throw, if you've made quite a large one, you could actually throw it over an upturned cup and then let it set and yeah. it makes a little basket. Um, mm. The good thing is, and this is the chef's cheat, oh. is you can actually put them back, if, if, they, if they misshape, you can put them back in the oven on a low heat and let them soften again and then bring them out and change the shape again. <laughs> nice. Hey, well, you could do children's parties. It'd be like balloon animals. You just keep, yeah. keep going. <laughs> um, Irina, have you done vegan twiling? Frankly, I never had a chance uh, to cook it, uh, <laughs> but I know how to do it. And I even uh, have idea uh, to make it as a decoration uh, for uh, one of the dishes on our menu. And my idea was to make it colorful. Uh, oh. You can use, yeah, like for example, uh, I really love using different uh, powders, uh, like uh, sweet potato powder for a purple or red cabbage, even for more bright color or spinach. So it's good nutritious ingredients or blue spirulina for blue, for example, uh, matcha for dessert. So it's so many ideas how you can color uh, your twill uh, if you finally uh, have a courage uh, to do it on your own in your uh, home kitchen because it's really a difficult thing to do. Uh, but if you have a free, free day, uh, try to do it uh, colorful. Uh, and use um, the recipe Andrew just told you. Very good. Yeah, and it's good for giving texture to a dish because we're often accused, I mean, you can do a savoury twill or a, or a sweet twill, and we're often accused of, you know, oh, vegan food is soft mush, you know, whether from the meat-eating world. You get oh, that, yeah. Uh, you know, we have to just get it all the time in the restaurant, oh, it's going to be bland, it's going to be taste, it's going to be soft and mushy. And it's quite a good way. So if you, for example... Um, as we've just said there, if you, if, you, if you did a dish with sweet potato, you could actually use sweet potato powder, make a twill, mm. so that you have that sweet potato on the dish twice in, in its form as it was, and in a twill form, and it gives texture to the dish. Yeah, nice. Yeah, like this crispy element uh, to finish, uh, that the dish uh, will be interesting, and uh, also it's important how the dish looks so I think for the vegan food uh, is important as well uh, because there is a myth that vegan food is boring. It's something like salad or boiled I don't know. lentils. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you can do everything the same. Just uh, the only thing you you just skip animal products, and you know there is no limit uh, doing anything uh, uh, anything you just want. Yeah. Well, there you go, um, Catherine. I think you should jump in and have a go. And, you know, uh, if worst comes to worst, some flavours of Dorito are vegan. Uh, <laughs> not quite the same. Um, well, this is a question that we've asked uh, in every podcast so far. What do you, what do you do? What do you, what do you do with your food? Wow, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because it's so... 
One, one of the things I find with tofu is you have to get flavour into it, and we all know that. It, it's difficult to get flavour in, and I find that, uh, and I've had it so many times, um, for me, one of the problems is when people cut it into, say, a cube, mm. the outside, let's say you've marinated it in, let me think, chilli, lemon and soy sauce. Yeah. Okay? The flavour is on the outside, but only it only penetrates so far. Yeah. So what happens is when you eat that block of tofu, you've got the flavour on the outside, and then the inside is back to boring tofu. Yeah. So for me, it's very important to slice it thin before you marinate it. Right. So that that percentage of penetration compared to the ratio of the inside yes. is higher. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's all about the surface the, area, right? Yeah. So you're, you're increasing the surface area. Yeah, so, and then pat it dry and pan fry it in the smallest amount of oil mm. so it crisps up. But because it's thin, you get some, some texture to it. But also you, 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 there's lots of flavor from whatever the marinade was. Nice. Surface area is key. Uh, yeah. Irina, what, what, what would you do with it? You know, I cook tofu quite often, so I, I will choose the fast one. Uh, first, you drain the tofu, you know, uh, um. you can use a special device to, to drain it, or you just, uh, you know, use a pile of books and put on it, or just, you know, um, I, the, the tofu I use, clear spring organic, uh, it's not a lot of uh, water in it or, or tofu bran for example is amazing it's not a lot of it's quite firm tofu yeah that's the, the problem with tofu. it sometimes isn't it yeah. yeah so the firm tofu is quite easy I do small cubes then I use a mixture of uh, uh, nutritionalist uh, garlic powder onion powder smoked paprika uh, you know put it for several minutes mix and then I bake it uh, so it has a crunch, but it's still a healthy dish for every day when you don't want to deep fry it. Nice. And then I use different sauces. For example, one day I can use buffalo, one day I can use uh, barbecue, uh, another day I use, uh, you know, more like orange uh, sticky tofu. So depending on my mood, I change the taste of tofu. And in my non-vegan life, it was a chicken. It has no taste, the same as tofu. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. tasteless. And uh, it all depends how you marinate it uh, and what sauce you put in it. And it can be anything, you know. Uh, that, that's what I'm doing uh, with tofu. If you use a little bit cornstarch uh, or any, you know, cover that then keep the, uh, the flavor of the sauce, uh, it, and inside it's still, you know, it, it's just, just not be greedy with the sauce. More sauce, more tasty uh, tofu. That's yeah. a top tip. And that yeah. spice blend that you were talking about before with the onion powder and the garlic powder and the smoked paprika and the nutritional, that works really well on fried gnocchi. I'm just saying. It's a great uh, kind yeah, of, yeah. if you're missing the kind of bacony thing, it's, it's got a lot of crispness and chewiness and yeah. it's, it's a lot of fun. And I find with, with tofu is we, we've been messing about with, uh, at the moment, with coatings and um, dipping it sort of in some soy milk or uh, oat milk first mm. and coating it in polenta flour. Ah. Um, also um, used some coconut flour, coated it in coconut flour and then pan fried it. Um, so playing with different flours and yeah. pan frying it, it gives it, it gives you more options. Yeah. Because we're always looking for more options yeah. um, to make things more interesting to us. So different coatings. I'm going to be honest with you and you can't laugh at this one. I won't. I ground up some cornflakes. Uh, <laughs> okay, and, I laughed a bit. Yeah. No, but, I, <laughs> but that's genius. I love that idea. Yeah, in a pestle and mortar. Yeah. And coated it and pan fried it. It was, it was actually quite nice. Also with Rice Krispies. Yeah. Because they're already crisp and yeah. pound them right down. Yeah. Dipped it in in a, in a, 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 an oat milk and then pan fried it. It's, I love that. It's actually quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's cool. I make like a KFC uh, tofu style. You know, it can be you know this. And you need to double cover it in a, a butter, yeah. uh, and then a first butter layer, and then uh, cornflakes, uh, cr crushed cornflakes, and then yeah. you will have kind of KFC style tofu. And then you need you shouldn't cut it, so you just uh, rip it in quite big pieces yeah. uh, with your hands. Uh, 
uh, and then you dip it in butter and then in uh, cornflakes. Yeah, that's another amazing uh, style wow. of making this yeah. crispy texture. I'm, I'm in. I'm, 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 I'm very down with the cornflakes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do another one because it, it's just as, as we're talking here, ideas are coming back to me. I, I did something last year where we made a batter, as uh, I was doing something but then, I did um, a batter with, I think it was one third regular flour and two thirds um, polenta flour. Mm. But then I took some, um, some tin sweet corn, dried it off, smashed it up a bit oh. and folded that, some of that into the batter as well. Who and needs the tofu? In... Just eat that now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so it's almost oh, so it's quite yellowy because of yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the polenta flour, and then you have the bits of um, uh, a sweet corn going through it. It's quite nice. Uh, I think we did it with smoked paprika oil or something afterwards, like a little dip. I forget now. That sounds epically good. Thank you so much for those answers. They're brilliant. Now, I'm always the first to tell you that a healthy diet's the most important thing. Am I right, guys? No, but it is. Uh, there are some nutrients, though, that can be difficult to get when you're plant-based. That's why I take Vivo Life's vegan vitamin B12, omega-3 and D3 daily. Did you know it's been reported that 98% of us are not consuming enough omega-3? Vivo Life's omega-3 is made from sustainably grown algae, not fish, so it doesn't harm marine life. And because it comes from algae, it also doesn't contain any of the nasty heavy metals like mercury, which you often find, sadly, in fish. And finally, their omega-3 comes in liquid form rather than those gigantic capsules. That means the omega-3 is consumed by your body in a more direct way, and it's stronger and more potent than almost any other omega-3. The best thing of all is that I know all of their products are made with natural ingredients I can try trust. So if you're interested in trying their plant-based supplements, then you can use my code VEGANLIFE, or one word, to get 10% off your first purchase on the vivolife.co.uk website. Tabitha says, never mind what do you do with tofu, what do you do with cauliflower? I've seen so many different ways to cook cauliflower. What's the panel's best way to cook this vegetable? Um, Andrew, let's start with you. Oh, I, I, my favourite, and I know everyone says this, and, it, and it's very popular, is to roast it. Mm. Um, but what I found is, um, if you keep it in quite a large piece, what happens is, by the time the inside is cooked, the outside's blackened. So what I do with it is, let me try and picture, take out some of the outer leaves, but not all, stand it so that the, the head is on the chopping board and the stalk is looking up. Yes. Cut it in half all the way through, and then that half cut into quarters through the, so you've got wedges. Ah. And then onto a baking tray on, on, on a, a mat or some greaseproof paper, touch of a uh, little bit of olive oil on, some salt and pepper, and then roast it off. However, that's number one, and I like that because when you roast something, what you're actually doing is, you, and this is it. Everything contains sugar in, in some form, natural sugars. Uh, so vegetables contain some form of sugar. And what happens is it caramelizes. That's why vegetables go brown in the oven or when you fry them. It's the actual, their own natural sugars caramelizing and that mm. deepens the flavor. But another way is, um, that I quite have done it a couple of times is, is to make a pan of oat milk. Mm -hmm. Cut, break the florets of the cauliflower and cook them in the oat milk. Oh. When they're cooked, take them out, put them to one side to stay warm, and then thicken the, the, the oat milk with some corn flour, or you can use wheat flour, uh -huh. until it's thick, and then add some vegan cheese to it and season it with a bit of salt and pepper, and then put that over the top of your cauliflower. Uh. So, because normally if you were doing that, you would boil the cauliflower first in water, and then the water goes in the sink, which is yeah, a waste. With so all if the you flavor cook it in, it, in the milk, so you've got the flavor of the cauliflower in the milk, and that becomes part of the dish as well. That's brilliant. I love that. Irina, what do you do with a cauliflower? Um, I will say, you know, my favorite recipe that all uh, my vegan and non-vegan friends and my family members love uh, and you know it's good idea for family uh, dinner so you first you just uh, cover uh, cauliflower with uh, this mixture I was talking about uh, that's always in my pantry uh, nutritional yeast uh, 
smoked paprika, onion and uh, uh, garlic powder uh, yes. and bake it. So while you're baking the cauliflower, uh, you, might, uh, you make a butter uh, in one plate and panka in another plate. Uh, and you're making really easy sauce, you can make at home anytime if you have oranges, fresh orange juice, then take any wine, if you have uh, some interesting uh, Japanese or Chinese wine, it will be better, but any white wine, uh, you know, simple can go good. Uh, agave syrup, uh, as I never use uh, sugar at home, uh, some ginger and maybe a, some something chili, like chili sauce or fresh chilies, uh, yeah. you simmer it you know, while the cauliflower is baking very, on very slow fire and uh, wait until the texture is very sticky, sexy, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when your cauliflower uh, is ready, you put it in a butter or you can use it again, like a more healthy version, but less crispy. Less Just fun. put it in a yeah. sauce and it still will be amazing because sauce has a lot of flavor in it. Uh, but if you want more crisp, again, you deep fry it uh, in a butter and panka, any type of panka you can use, uh, gluten-free, for example. Uh, and, you know, just put it in the sauce, mix, mix, mix very fast. It's ready, put it on a plate, uh, a little bit, you know, um, onion and uh, sesame seeds on top for a little bit crunchy texture, chives or something like this. Uh, and you can, uh, like a side, you can use cream cheese uh, mixed with uh, yogurt and it's, it tastes, and a little bit chives again, and it tastes like, a, you know, this sour cream sauce uh, and mixture of this um, sticky cauliflower with cold and nice uh, mm. sour cream nice. is so good uh, that, you know, you can turn any meat eater vegan magic dish <laughs> <laughs> i gotta say i'm i'm very happy with the frying quotient of this episode <laughs> I, I frying is makes everything good um those are great thank you emma says can i have a lowdown on how to plate food properly yeah i always see that i mean you know you see these amazing dishes with this sort of elegant smear of a sauce and then this little micro herby bit of frippery on the top and twiggles coming out your ears <laughs> is is there a secret to composing a plate well uh andrew <sighs> I'll, I'll be honest it's my weak point um over the years we've worked with so many chefs in a restaurant and and some you can give them three items and put them on a plate and they can make it look amazing uh, and some can't i'm better with flavor Right. However, what I have learnt over the years is some small but very basic tips is when you're plating food, first of all, it's the plate. Mm -hmm. Try and choose a plate that's neutral. So you don't want something with lots of squiggles and stars and, and fans everywhere because what that does is it detracts from the food. Right. Try and choose a, a plate that's one colour or, or maybe two colours at the most. Um... Try and choose something that's quite flat. I tell you what I hate. I'm sorry, this is a digression. I'm interrupting your flow. But <laughs> you know when you get plates and around the edge it says soup or yeah, pasta. As if you don't know what it is. Yeah. But it's just like, what happens on days when you don't want to eat soup <laughs> or pasta? I just, I hate those so much. Yes, anyway, I know so exactly sorry. what Carry you mean. Carry on. So try and choose something plain. Um, and usually something that's quite... Uh, something like a black plate or a white plate because you can see the food and it pops out. I mean, yeah. That's a term we'd use. And also is, I'm going to let me pick something really, really basic. Chickpea curry and rice. Okay. Lovely. Yes. Right. So uh, something quite, what I cast as quite basic. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's be honest, not many people at home are going to start making the fennel granitas with a... Mm -hmm. Uh, with a, a smoked brioche sauce, etc. I, I so, love a fennel granita. <laughs> the fiends all the time. So uh, with the chickpea curry, with the rice, instead of just putting the rice on the plate, what you would do instead is when it's cooked, you could do you could do two rices. So you could one that's plain, and in your second plan, uh, pan, you could do one that's been coloured with um, with turmeric. Uh -huh. So already you've you've, you've increased the colour. Yeah. 
and what you could do is when they're boiled and drained off mix them both together so you've got two colours of rice and pack them and it's a very simple thing but pack them into an oiled cup or an oiled sugar bowl and turn that out onto the plate I'm being very basic here yeah, yeah, yeah. turn that out onto the plate but the point of this is you give height Yes, and that's very important. Is that when I when I, I look at Instagram and someone's made themselves a veggie curry, and I think there's no height to it. Yeah. So that that small point there is you've given height to the plate and some colour. Then let's say you put the chickpea curry on, which people would normally spoon on. Keep it to the centre of the plate. When you look at a picture on a wall and it has a frame round it, the picture doesn't go over the frame. So right. with your, if you think of your plate as a picture and leave a border around it mm -hmm. that's untouched and what that does is it centralizes the f it focuses your eye on what's in the middle of the plate that being the food and if you look at when when chefs plate a meat dish they they always have a focal point on there that's usually the piece of steak or the lamb or whatever yeah so try and do the same thing instead of just a, a, a tumble of rice and a tumble of curry and a, and a, and a bread so what happens is when you bring things together, you create focal points on the plate. So for example, in this example would be the, the rice. When you put the chickpea curry next to it, keep it tight in next to it, away from the sides. Mm -hmm. And it, before you even made it, keep some chickpeas to one side and you could just dry them out in the oven and sprinkle them on afterwards. So what you've done is to the eye, you've got a chickpea curry and now you've got a different texture of chickpeas on there that being the roasted ones nice when you put the bread on there let's say a poppadom mm -hmm. instead of just putting it on the side snap it in half and maybe lean one against the mound of rice and i'm not saying this is what you have to do but the principles are yeah. you've created height to the plate and you've created focal points by bringing the bringing them together keeping them off the side of the plate and adding texture to the to the to the dishes and obviously there's color so you could add some coriander on there some chopped spring onion but it's it's giving form to the objects nice i love that if that makes sense i'm oiling an ashtray as we speak oh, uh, okay. <laughs> um irina what about you how, how are your plating i mean I, I think they're amazing because you, you, you were the editor of Vogue. Yeah, so I behave like an art director. When we're creating a new dish, I always uh, want to see the picture, you know. And I, I just give the advice what I'm doing. So I imagine that I'm an artist and the plate is a canvas. Uh, and, you know, plants that I want to use uh, in, the, in my dish, ingredients, uh, is a paint. So, uh, I just give practical advices that I always use. I always try to be minimalistic because then uh, just to use not more than three colors, uh, main colors that pop up, uh, then you will never have, you know, too much, too much of color and every color will pop up more and be more strong. Then, of course, listen to your inner chef, listen to your intuition, uh, feel what you really want, how you want to you know, the dish look. That's why I agree with uh, Andrew that the plate better to be uh, flat or if you use something like a risotto, it can be a bowl. Uh, but the color, it's better to be not, you know, cold ones like wh white. You can say off-white and it's better to be, you know, like something made by hands, you know, local caramies, uh, something like this. Uh, and then you choose several colors and again, you can use uh, some colorful things like purple potato and you can use your old greens uh, to reduce waste uh, and mix it with your basic vegan maya and you have a green maya so and you already have purple and green uh, and inside of the croquettes you can put avocado again you know uh, so it can be anything or just uh, any, any basic maya can be any color if you use uh, something colorful in it, uh, like turmeric or, or uh, anything, so yeah. purple carrots. Uh, we we are we experimenting much, or like black garlic, amazing. The taste is so good. Uh, so just keep uh, when you're plating it, uh, keep the main ingredient, you know, on one side, and for example, sauces. Uh, you can put another side and you can use not only one sauce but two sauces 
also some easy thing that you can, for example, again, risotto or something that doesn't look really attractive on a plate, but you want to do risotto. Yeah. Why not? Then you can make carpaccia of uh, eringi mushrooms and put it on top. And again, uh, I always use this uh, life hack uh, to uh, not to throw away the old greens. And I mix it with oil and make green oil and add, you know, like on top of uh, mushrooms to give them a little bit of color so they're like white mixed with green and, you know, this creamy uh, risotto. And so it's so many options, uh, even with some simple dishes. Uh, or if you are just completely, you know, out of time, you need to make something fast and you still want, you know, your plate to be... Uh, beautiful, uh, use microgreens and it's also very nutritious, it has a lot of vitamins uh, and so that's amazing tip how to make any any dish beautiful, just add on top uh, some micro uh, arugula or uh, micro chives or something like this, so it's it's uh, five minutes, uh, five minutes tip uh, how to or five seconds tip how to make your dish beautiful that's uh, art, art yeah. Plate. color yeah just color that's that's what I, I love uh that's why I, I love vegan food so much that it's much easier uh how to make steak attractive that's true impossible impossible yeah, yeah if you doesn't like how the meat looks and you already you know it, it's it's not attractive and uh with you know with plants you have so many options uh, flowers, uh, edible flowers. I like. We love using uh, in in the restaurant wild garlic flowers. They're so beautiful. Or amaranth uh, flowers. So you you are just you know you. The only limit is your fantasy. Uh, so art of plating is very 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 easy uh, when you're vegan. Ah, top tips. Those are great ideas, Emma. I hope that helps. Did you say black garlic at some point in there? Because I've got a jar yeah, full of it in my airing cupboard. And oh, I think it's, it's about it's going to be about another eight months, but I've never tasted it, so I'm really excited. Yeah, just just mix it uh, with a basic vegan Maya, yeah. uh, or make yourself uh, your own homemade Maya, as I'm doing, and then mix it with black garlic. It doesn't have this garlicky strong feeling that you don't want to go to you know out after it. Yeah, but yeah. It gives amazing umami taste uh, wow. that uh, yeah when it's fermented and it's also very good for your gut uh, because it has you know uh, it's fermented food so I really I re and it gives a little bit sweetness nice nice sweetness because it's caramelized a little bit when yeah. it's fermented yeah. so definitely take out of your pantry and try give it a try yeah I'll let you know yeah. uh, you'll, <laughs> you'll know it happens. I, I find that some when people use garlic regular garlic they overuse it mm. and and for me it, it sometimes there's too much in there where and it, and it takes over the other ingredients but with black garlic it's almost toned down right. it's still there but it's not as harsh and it has that sweetness about it so when you add it it doesn't take over every other flavor nice i cannot wait i'll probably just Chew on the cloves. Yeah. Right, last question. Mike says, polenta is such a strange ingredient that confuses me. However, I see it on menus, plus it's gluten-free. I'd love some ideas on how to cook with this ingredient. Um, that's a great question because I everything I've done with polenta, is, it's, sort of, it's sort of a bit like wallpaper paste. I can do you rock-solid wallpaper paste or I can do you runny wallpaper paste. Those are your two options. Irina, do you cook with polenta? Uh, yes, I, I have once experience uh, uh, doing it. Uh, you know, uh, I wanted to make an open sandwich, but I had no gluten-free bread, you know, and I'm not eating gluten. So, uh, and uh, I found some polenta and I decided, hmm, I can make, you know, this small uh, square uh, pieces that uh, can be the base for nice afternoon tea open sandwich uh, and you can use any tartar on top or any you know like any anything you want on top sure so uh the the secret is you need to cook your polenta really well done you know like i don't know how to that it's really soft then you need to uh very important to eat nutritionally so vegans love it and i love it yeah uh, again some spices like 
garlic powder, onion powder, uh, any spices. It, it depends what you want to do. If it is like an Indian dish, uh, you can use a little bit turmeric or uh, like you can leave it very plain, you know. So, but I think nutritional is, is something that make it, you know, come all together. Uh, I, I never tried, but I had an idea now that you can use a little bit of cream cheese. Uh, uh, I love one, it's, it's named Holy Smoke. Uh, from palace culture, so you can use a little bit the smoked cream cheese mm -hmm. uh, to make smoked uh, polenta. Uh, then you just, uh, when, when it's ready, you put it in the tray and try to make it very even with some spatula. Uh, I think it should be around 3-4 centimeters, that it's not, you know, it's high enough. Uh, but it's not too high yeah. uh, and you need to leave it in a fridge at least two hours that you know it's it's uh, uh, cor cornstarch you know become all, it's all become once you know yeah. like what th that you then you can cut it into into even pieces so it's better to take uh, the sharpest knife knife you have at home and yeah. cut it in a rectangular mm -hmm. or square pieces I like rectangular more uh, and then cover, uh, if you want uh, to make it really crunchy and nice, you need to cover with cornstarch and then deep fried, I prefer olive oil, uh, but mild one, you know, the light one, so you yeah. don't have, you know, this too, too bitter taste. Uh, so it's super crispy base for anything you want uh, to put on top. Or you can, you know, like, uh, you can make more thinner pieces and use it instead of french fries, kind of, you know, uh, yes. and dip it in, dip it in aioli or uh, something like this, uh, I, like so, n nice, nice sauce. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, Andrew, have you done polenta yeah. stuff? Can I be really honest? Yes. The first time I made it was many, many, many years ago. I've been a chef for 30 odd years. The first time I made it years ago, I, f I, I forgot. I can't remember I was even working and I was working for someone else and I, I followed the instructions on the packet uh, and like we've just heard you have to cook it properly it's basically it, it's liquid it's this you know water for example um, polenta is just maize or a form a form of sweet corn mm. if you like I did it boiled it up um, you can eat it two ways you can put it straight out of the pan and it's almost like porridge like yeah. or you can add it to a tray uh, and let it set and it sets firm in the same way that if you mash some potatoes and let them go cold the next day they will be firm it's just a starch gelatinizes in the in the potato mm. and i tasted it and i thought well, that doesn't taste very much <laughs> oh, what's the fuss yeah um so i started messing about with it and i i, I i've actually done it where the, if you read the back of the box, the packet will say, uh, bring the water to the boil, blah, blah, blah. I've done it with oat milk. Okay. So instead of using water, I use oat milk and added it and boiled it up. And then I thought, well, hang on, can I go a bit further? So I've actually done it with oat milk and then added some tomato puree to the pan and then add the polenta oh. and then cook it. And then, like I say, you can you can add other things to it after that. As we've just heard, you can chop some olives into it, um, chop some basil into it, garlic, chili. Your choice, you know. It's, yeah. There's no there's no rules. And then turn it out, as we just heard. Let it go cold. You slice it almost like a cake, and then you can pan fry it or roast it. Then we we're doing a, a cookery school around the around the country at the moment and i wanted to this is going to sound weird i want to do a dessert with polenta we used to do one in the restaurants because mm -hmm. you can actually make it the base of it is you know it doesn't really taste Pretty much you can, yeah, yeah yeah so you can add what you want to it so i thought to myself what about polenta and strawberries oh and i played with the idea in my head so i thought well, let's try it i went to the shop and there was no polenta on the shelf. <laughs> went, ah! So then I quickly Googled it and I thought, where else can I get it? And polenta came up. And I read that many, many years ago in Italy, before they had maize, they would use other flowers. Because all it is is boiled flour. It's just right, maize right. flour. So then I th and they were using things such as bean flour. So, so you could say like chickpea flour. Or they were using um, chestnut flour. Right. And I thought, that's clever. And I looked on the shelf 
and there was coconut flour. Aha. Uh -huh. And I went, right. So I took it home and I took some oat milk in a pan and I had some sugar in there uh, and I added some of that, you know, the coconut block that you put into yes, curries that you... I do, so I yeah, added the cream, some of that. Yeah. yeah, like a little... Looks like a, a, bl a block of chocolate. Yeah. It actually is quite nice eating like chocolate. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, so I chopped some in, added some. So by now I've got oat milk in the pan. I've got some sugar in there and I've got a block of, um, or part of a block of coconut uh, cream. Then I added the coconut flour, cooked it, thickened it, set it in a, in a mould, like a little ring or a square, yeah. let it go cold, brought it out and I went, that's coconut polenta. Ah. So from that, we actually put it on uh, on the cookery school and we do a dish with in my mind it's co it's strawberries and cream so we did coconut polenta with strawberries we did strawberries a few different ways torched and toffee etc so mm. my point being break down the barriers break down the rules don't just use polenta flour use right. a different flour amazing and then boil it up in some liquid, maybe with some spices in there or some a little bit of marmite maybe. Pour it into a in onto a tray and then slice it and, and fry it and, and let your imagination go wild. You're so right that you know you, you the, what counts against it is also its strength, in that it's this sort of homogenous slurry with no real flavour, which gives you licence to pack it with whatever exactly. flavour you want. Um I had polenta once. I was recovering from food poisoning in what was Yugoslavia. And it was like the first food that we managed to find that was at the time I was a vegetarian. And it was um, it was just sort of fingers of polenta with plain yogurt. And I mean, probably because I was recovering from food poisoning, but it tasted like the best thing I had ever eaten in my life. And it was a very coarse polenta and maybe there was even some sweet corn in it. Um, but, you know, like nice. uh, there were some really good Alpro makes fantastic Greek yogurt. Yeah. Um, I would say, yeah. you know, if you want a cheap and cheerful quick yeah. quick hit try that and it and it is cheap because although i don't know what i can't remember which it costs now when you add it to the to the liquid it swells so you, you actually mm. get more than than you need and it's filling as well absolutely well there you go mike i hope you enjoy that and thanks so much to both of you for such wonderful um and and you know inclusive advice you know you 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 do such high-end stuff and it's really lovely um of you to kind of share so much with us um where can people find you and your work irina let's start with you um so uh holy carrot uh restaurant uh opened recently uh it's uh located in uh Hanscre street uh just near nearby Harrods. uh it's uh, located in Urban Retreat, a uh, place for health and beauty. And uh, uh, so we are, we are really uh, open recently, but already uh, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, people come and say, oh, it's, it's something new. We never had anything like this in London. And uh, that's what we want. We want to, because we wanted, um, to, to, to open uh, a project that is open all day, not only for the for evenings. And it, I, I was missing this because I was in uh, Vanilla Black uh, and uh, uh, it's really, a, you know, like fine dining experience. And uh, what we wanted, you know, to have a fully vegan restaurant uh, that you can have all day dining. Uh, for, That's for my now, kind of dining. All yeah, day. yeah, yeah, all day. <laughs> yeah. So th that's it. It's on my list. Yeah, it's definitely on my list too. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm guys, I'm happy uh, to. Uh, I'm waiting for you to visit the restaurant and I will be really excited to because we are launching two uh, new menus uh, one um, afternoon tea. Uh, wow. With a lot of nice. small desserts, uh, looking really, really pretty, uh, mm. and uh, foraging menu because now it Ooh. will be season of uh, mushrooms, herbs, and it's such yeah. a good opportunity to show that uh, you know Mother Earth already gave us all the good ingredients, uh, and uh, so it's a lot of interesting things coming, and uh, I want to see you uh, in Holy Carrot soon. Uh, and host you so can't wait i i'm i i am honestly so there definitely uh, andrew what about you um 
we were vanilla black for 16 years before COVID. Um, ah. We now, uh, I, many years ago, I used to be a, about a million years ago, actually, I think it was, hmm. I used to be a chef lecturer, I used to teach catering. Um, so what we've done now is capitalised on that and we are travelling around the country doing uh, cookery lessons and we also do some online um, and once every, it changes every month, there's a new dish. Uh, last month, it was not mushroom risotto, which <laughs> kind of tells you what it is. Uh, and we send a box of the magic ingredients out. So we send out some weird and wonderful things such as tomato powder and ultra text and xanthan gum. And with that as a QR link, you go and get a few bits from the shop. You have our magic ingredients, a QR link, and you get me giving you a cookie lesson. Uh, and there's also a live Zoom version, um, if you can understand my northern accent. <laughs> I can understand both your accents perfectly. <laughs> and um, I, that sounds like a wonderful um, venture. And we wish you every success with it. And Thank both you. of you, please do come and join us again soon on the podcast. We'd love to Definitely. have you. Definitely. It's been very good. Thank you both so much. That's it for this week's podcast. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, you can send your questions to podcast at veganlifemag.com. Uh, veganlifemag.com is where you can pick up a subscription to the magazine or you can go and buy it in a shop or you can download the app. And don't forget, we're on the interwebs, Instagram, social media thing. Um, we are, hang on, just check, Vegan Life uh, underscore podcast. I knew that. I did know that. I got it right this week. <laughs> finally um anyway thanks very much indeed for your company my name's jake yep and i'll see you soon bye bye this has been a swanburst media production <laughs>